up with you, I suppose, mate. How have you found the last couple of weeks coming back from your drawing teams? Yeah, been really good. Thanks, Theo. I've pulled up really well. We had the hit out against Norwood two Saturdays ago. Pulled up really well from that. Was uh, like Obviously, Ginger hadn't played a game in a while, so that, that post-match soreness come back, um, which was a good feeling to have, but groins felt good. Um, and then we had a good hit out on Saturday in the, in the wet. So I was, again, Domsey sore, but in terms of the groin and everything else, pulled up really well. Um, so yeah, going forward, it's just, we've got Tuesday and Thursday session, got to tick those boxes and then it'll be up to whether the coaching staff think I'm ready and whether the fitness staff think I've, I've done the work to be able to play. So I'm feeling good. Do you feel like you've done enough? Yeah, yeah, I feel pretty good. I feel confident I can play. Um, but they're the, they're the professionals in the fitness side that know, they, they track all the kilometres and stuff we do. So they know whether I'm, whether I'm good to go in terms of loading and whether I've done the work. And then the coaching staff will make that decision on how I played versus Norwood, how I trained Saturday and how I trained this week. So what, what would be the danger, I suppose, of going in at the level you're at? Well, the, the danger is obviously just load-wise, just whether my body's ready for it. So, um, not necessarily re-injury, but just whether I can perform at the level and get through a game. And um, like I said, I, f I feel like I can personally, but it's not necessarily always up to me because they're the ones that have that objective view. Um, and I obviously, I'm always going to feel like I'm ready to go. That's that's what the players do. Competitive side against a good team in Geelong, I just want to get out there and play. But that's not always up to me. I guess with that game. Oh, so you're standing there on Saturday afternoon, you're standing beside us. Does that like many of your fellow stoppers are around? Yeah, that'll be interesting. We've got a week to figure that one out. A um, few, few boys down back have got a couple of bumps and bruises like, like I did, um, or like I had. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, we'll have the week to figure that out. But it looks like most of us are on the mend, um, especially Butsy and Jake, Jake Kelly. So um, hopefully I've got got my brothers down back to, to help me out against what's a pretty good forward line. I've got to ask you about that forward line with Jeremy Cameron and the likes. Um, it's pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah, they're obviously, they're two key forwards, are two of the best in the comp, if not the best in the comp, and they, obviously Cameron getting up, up and down the ground, he, he runs a lot and he makes you work hard for it, and then Hawkins is just such a force down there, so how we work with them two, and then also having someone like Rowan and, and Myers and stuff who's speed and um, ability to just sneak goals can just be so dangerous. Um, we're going to have a couple of couple of big meetings about it to try and figure out how we go against it, and it's going to be a good challenge for us. And maybe Josh Jenkins as well for the first time. Yeah, yeah, they've obviously got Jenkins. They've got um, Stanley can go forward. Blitzarves is tall enough, and when he goes forward, he's dangerous. So um, it'd be interesting if we play against JJ. Um, Stanley's obviously can get up and clunk it. So a couple of big boys. It's going to be a, a difficult task, but um, I feel the way that we've trained this, this pre-season and the way that we've come across these last two games and helped each other out and tried to teams, um, defend as a team, that I think, think we'll handle ourselves all right. It's always hard to know, but do you feel like there might be a chance for a couple of debutants for you boys this week? Um, yeah, off the top of my head, potentially. Um, it is early, yeah, so we still got, as I said, we still got those two trainings, so you don't, don't know exactly. Um, fitness is another part, whether, whether everyone can get up, so selection will be tough, but um, no, these, these boys have come in and done so well across the board, from, from Riley, our first pick, down Sammy Berry, Luke Pedler, even James Borlace, one of our rookie picks, he's come in and showed a lot down back, so um, selection will be interesting, and I'm glad I'm not in that uh, position to have that headache. What's that, sorry? Uh, yeah, he had a couple of couple of little things pop up. He was uh, running around on Saturday, did a little bit, so um, he'll be assessed throughout the week, and we'll see where we go from there with him. Um, but hopefully, he gets up because he's a pretty pretty big part of our team. Tony Nick Murray's been brilliant in the preseason. Obviously, you've been in line and play. Can you just talk us through a little bit of what you saw from him in the preseason and his ankle issue? Yeah, great story, Muzz. He um, he's obviously had a bit of a different path to get to where he is today and to get a list spot. Um, he went from working on the farm for 12, 14 hours to then running home to get his fitness. So he's, he's a great story. Um, and he's just been head down, bum up, just work as hard as he can. He's um, done a ton of work with, with Tiles and the other, the other backs in terms of watching vision, trying to figure out how to get better. And then he's also come out and trained 100% every day and just gone at it. Um, but yeah, he had a little, little ankle roll on Saturday. Um, he, he got helped off the track, so it didn't look great early, but in terms of how he's moving around at the moment, I think he might be all right, but we have to assess that as it goes along. And if he, if he recovers quickly, he's definitely put his hand up for a, for a shot at it. Um, so hopefully he, he's uh, in a position to get that opportunity. And I think Drop touched on it, how much of baptism the fire for, you know, without Danny Tale against a red one, which I'll take, I guess that's a paper. 
Um, yeah, well, baptism by fire is a, a pretty good way to put it, but I think we, we wouldn't have it any other way in a sense. We've, we've built this group up to be a pretty young and hungry outfit. Um, we sort of like being the underdog, like being, being doubted, and um, I think the games against Port didn't show exactly what, what we feel we've built this pre-season, and um, we did show some things against Port where we feel like if we can push that over a full four quarters a game, we can, we can test anyone. So. They're a good outfit, they're a good forward line, but we, we like, the, uh, like the challenge. It sounds like there's going to be 40,000 fans in the weekend. How excited are you to play in front of you know, a big crowd? Yeah, it should be good. Um, we're, we, obviously, we love our fans. Our, our members are the, are the best in the AFL. and um, I played a few games last year in front of them, a um, couple of games in the hub where there was sort of a few Adelaide fans, but not enough to really make a noise. So to have, have 40,000 back there cheering just for us and uh, going against Geelong will be, will be great, and it'll be uh, nice when we get it down forward and a few of the big fellas or Shane on that can kick a couple goals and hear that hear that Adelaide overall. And I know there's been a bit of talk about members being shifted around seat-wise and I think the players have been helping out with a bit of the, the PR thing. Can you just talk us through that? Yeah, we've had some of the boys calling up the members just trying to um, just trying to preach patience and thank them for their support because it's been a uh, it's been a tough tough time because obviously we're having to shift seats with the new COVID protocols and the 75% capacity sort of stuff but again we, we thank the, thank the members for their patience, but also just trust that we're doing everything we can. We've got so many people working overtime. We've got queues at the moment, and um, we've got extra people on just to try and figure it out. So um, the players are trying to help out. Staff's doing all they can, and yeah, we, we thank the patience of the of the members because we know it's pretty difficult and pretty uh, pretty frustrating considering the season's about what six days away. So yeah. Something there's obviously a couple of big fishes put in the paper with Rob, Lee, Brody. Is there any sort of development of where you're at with this? Yeah, still, still in talks. Um, my, my main thing has been to just get my body right. It's been an issue for me the last couple of years, obviously staying healthy. Um, so this pre-season was mainly, well, like we'll, we'll start the talks, but as long as I can get my body right for, for round one and so on, then we'll continue to get into that because it's just a different sort of different sort of thing to talk about when I'm trying to focus on trying to focus on what I can do. So um, it's it's still in talks and, and I still want to be here. That's that's this is home for me, this is where I want to be. But at the moment it's just trying to focus on getting everything else sorted. Um, can I just ask as well about the Slice and Steel as part of the leadership group. Were you guys consulted last week? Uh, obviously with the expected announcement that you might be around the club anymore. Yeah so we, we weren't consulted on, on this one in particular. This has solely been hand, handled by Tyson, his management and the football club. Um, we, were, we were talked to about the initial um, incident with Tyson and, and the punishment we were looking at for him and, and the leaders sat in on those meetings, but this, this most recent stuff has solely been between the football club and Tyson and um, yeah, decision, I'm not sure if a decision's been made yet and we'll get that info as, as soon as we can, but um, in terms of the leadership group that was solely handled by Tyson, the uh, the football staff. Is there any sort of reaction to that? Maybe if it is announced that, as everyone expects, that he might be around, is there just a, a reaction from you in terms of is it disappointing to see you gone, or is it one of those things that have happened? Yeah, it's a bit of bit of every, obviously we don't like we don't stand for those things at this club, and that's that's a part of what we're trying to build here. But it is disappointing for someone like Tyson who who showed showed promise last year and and. Um, we, we thought could could be a part of this, and whether whatever decision comes down, that's something that we've put a lot of thought into. This has been something that hasn't just happened overnight, and um, the club and his management have come to a decision that has been agreed upon. So, um, whatever it is, it's something that has, has happened, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll look to move forward and, and continue to develop the way we want to do. Can I tell us about last year? You know, there was a couple of hamstrings off the back of the knee, and now they're growing. Tell us a little bit about that sort of frustration and now, you know, a sense of a bit of renewed energy about your approaching round one that you're nearly good to go. Well, hopefully I've got that renewed energy regularly. I don't, I don't, I don't like to be too down all the time. Um, but yeah, my, my first hamstring was just a little niggle, so that was pretty easy to get over. The second one was the, uh, was the big one. Um, so it was pretty, pretty tough for a while, but um, I'm, I'm pretty... Uh, optimistic person so when it comes to those injuries and moving on and, and switching my perspective to actually trying to get back and play um, it was pretty much as soon as it happened I just had my little moments to process it and then I was good to go so I've had like incredible support staff here the physios the uh, the coaching group have been chatting to me weekly about what, what I'm expected in terms of training like not to do everything make sure that my body's right um, and then even when you are in rehab, the way that we're supported, it's it's a uh, it's a great environment to be injured in. As much as I don't <laughs> I don't want to be injured, but um, nah, all is uh, all is good at the moment, and I'm hoping yeah, hoping to get up for round one.